Okay. Well, we're starting without my uh, co-host, without my left-hand man, because he's um, <laughs> he's taking his I'm sweet time. I don't know what's up with that, but he's he's been private Ryan. Yeah, yeah, we see over that. But um, oh, 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 he just requested off me. Oh boy, he's on a minute <laughs> late. He's a minute okay, late. I was, I was just keeping his. I was just keeping his seat warm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, usually he's he's supposed to be here 15 minutes ago, but <laughs> wow, okay, that didn't mind. fucking happen. <laughs> he's like 15 minutes late though. You have to dock uh, some pay for that anyway. So, <laughs> welcome to wow, episode five of the fuck it shit show. We've got another person dropping into. Oh boy, um, you know today we're going to be talking about, as all of you should know by now, VR, avatar, and world creation. <laughs> so, um, we have some real cool people. We have evolved and we have prismic. We have. I don't even know what the fuck to call you anymore. Peach. Yeah, I changed my name. Okay, we have sorry. Peach, and we have Digi, um, and Skinrod, and then and my 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 left hand man is finally here, um, <laughs> and Vampy here, yeah, sorry. and a couple more people that'll be filtering in uh, a few minutes. They were usually a bit late, but um, you know, that's perfectly fine. Okay, so first off, Evolved Ant. You made Evolved Dance Arcade. What what made you decide to make your world? Specifically that one. So growing up as a kid, I used to always go to places like Discovery Zone, Chuck E. Cheese, uh, even like McDonald's. They would have all the, the little playpen that you can explore as a kid. And it was something I super enjoyed. I really loved that. But as you got older and you got taller, it became more and more awkward to go into those things. And so you just didn't even mm. want to go in there at all. So one day I was watching a friend of mine. He was streaming and he was playing VR chat and he found this random world from the game Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. And they exported one of the levels from that game of a, big, a giant like playpen. And when I seen that, I got super excited. I immediately logged into VR Chat. I joined off of him. I went into the world and I started running to go into the, the, the giant playpen. And as soon as I got to the playpen, you could go into it because they added colliders. And so there was no way to go inside. It was just for show, just to look at. And I was so frustrated. I was like, because for a moment, I thought I could relive what I thought I lost. So I said, no, I'm not having this. This is, this is such a good idea. So I immediately logged out of VR chat, opened Blender, and immediately started building the arcade. You know, because I'm like, no, this has to be a thing. Like, it's the perfect solution. I can't hang out in these, in these playpens anymore, but I could just make one in VR, and then I can hang out in one all I want. So that's what I did, and I started building it in, in Blender until it became what it is today. Yeah, it's it's, a, it's definitely a fun world. Um, <laughs> who who else here has been to Evolve Dance Arcade? Yeah. I've been. Anyone? Change my name. Raising the Yeah, you and me, you and me were there. Once. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, I actually think we were there with Evolved Ant. Uh, I think you might have met him once before. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. When did you I'm make not, your world? Not actually? Entirely sure. I, I never, uh, never looked. So the world was made, I believe, in 2022, and near the beginning of oh, the I year. It was older than but that. it. Yeah. So it, it was an iterative process started off as only the play area and then over time i added like the area for the arcade machines then i was like "Ooh, it'd be really great if i had a whole like trampoline park so then i spent time making the whole <laughs> trampoline area so it just grew over time and so in total you know it, it was over a year in development um just 
you know, there'd be odd months that I would be like, I'm going to do a big major update. Um, and, and I still update a little bit every now and then, even today. Um, but the problem is now, because a lot of people want me to update and, oh, could you add this game, could you add that game? The problem is that the world is already super pushing it on the Quest 2 hardware. Mm. And so because of that, any future additions has been greatly, like, put on hold. Um, because it's very difficult to add things without, like, messing up the performance I have right now. And I already mm. do a lot with performance because I'm I'm pretty experienced with how to get every little extra frame rate. So it's already pushing it. <laughs> yeah, have, have you thought of, like, um, having a separate Making, uh, version of it that adds more things specifically for PC? Yeah, like an alternate version. I know yeah, a lot of worlds so that's do a that very now. Common, it's a very commonly suggested thing to do. The problem with that would it be is fair? that would it? the way it works... Well, there's that, but, but more importantly, it takes a lot of time to build the arcade. You know, it takes a lot of my free time. Imagine now that the way it is right now, once I build it for PC, I could just click a button and then it can build it for request. But if I make a separate version... Now there's a whole other world that I also yeah. have to work on. It would just cut my, my yeah. time of being able to add features in half. That makes sense. <clears throat> in addition uh. to that, there's another thing we, we can't ever forget. The majority of players on this game are on Quest. PC is no yeah, longer heard, the majority player base. I heard on... Um... On New Year's this year, there was somewhere around like 53% of online users were Quest users at peak. And yes. then the rest of them were PC, but not not all of them would be VR. So it was probably only like 20 to 30% PC VR people. Correct. Actually, on, on a normal day, the, the ratio is much worse. Like, usually it's always a lot more Quest than PC. On New Year's, when it was yeah. half and half, that was, that's actually pretty rare. So it's usually worse, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, it does make sense. A lot of people have been uh, steering away from VR chat, and a lot of people have also come to VR chat solely because of the quest. So, yeah, that, that makes that sense for sure. Um, new. Yeah, I mean, I, I personally, my this this world here that you're all sitting in, I when I was working on this, um, I. Um, I made this back when the fucking VR Chat Home Kit was brand new back whenever that was, like 2018, 2019. And oh, wow. this is like the second major iteration of the world. So I actually have two versions of it uploaded on my uh, account, one of them before Udon and one of them after because I didn't want to break things, rebuild it all right away. <laughs> but uh, now it's just a click a button and couple shaders switch and that's it that's the only thing that changes between pc and quest right no uh -oh. the hell are you doing standing up uh i'm having issues the arch hat's so golden I days have <laughs> come and gone but it it, it'll always have its own it'll always have its own days because of uh the new generation yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I, most of us in here, I think, are from like the early, early days of VR chat, at least like 2018. Not me. No, no, you're you're new. Yeah, I forgot that about was, that. You're like yeah, brand that, new. That, that, <laughs> not quite normal. brand new, I'm but, probably, but you're uh, just I'm definitely a, the baby of the group here. <laughs> you're just a baby. <laughs> I'm probably one of the oldest. Uh, I was here For sure. since 2015. Oh wow! Yeah, <laughs> back in the that... ten character user ID days, <laughs> I would log into this game, and there'd only be one other person online, which was the CEO. Ooh, wow! Wow! That's that wild. Is... That's that's nine years ago. That is insane. Yeah, that's not that yeah. long ago. That's impressive. <laughs> and I, I know VR uh, Tech just threw something out on Twitter the other day, like ten cool ten facts, or whatever, old. and. Like back in 2018, like early 2018, there was less than 200. It had, VRChat had never gone past 200 concurrent users. And in the first few months of 2018, it went up to 20,000. 
Uh, okay, so that was 2017, not 2018. Oh, um, the tweet said 2018. That's what I'm going off of. The the tweet is wrong. They they're wrong. <laughs> and I know this. I know this because there's an entire story that I'm involved with, and I'm partly the reason why VR Chat went from 200 to 20,000. There's something I did back then that caused VR Chat to explode like that. No, I was part of a on. viral. Really, a lot of people make that claim. Yes, a lot of people make that claim. <laughs> and I have developers of VR Chat who can confirm it. So uh, the proof's in the pudding. I have, and I can show you video clips. I can show you videos from PewDiePie. Everyone knows that, that, that this is this what happened. I can tell you the entire story of how VR Chat exploded from 200 people to 20,000. And a lot of people think, oh, it was the Uganda Knuckles. No, the Uganda Knuckles came after this. Uganda Knuckles made it go from 15,000 to 20,000, but they're not the ones that started the explosion. It was something that happened before that. And I have plenty of proof of it, so. I'm not going to get into that story right I'd now. Love because, to, you know, but love to love to hear about that sometime, maybe on another podcast um, in the future. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, so, you, how much like udon um, work do you do in your world? There, there's reason I'm asking this. So my there's a lot of there's a lot of udon sharp. I don't use udon graph. I use udon sharp. Oh, and yeah, never. The Tetris. The Tetris game in my world, uh, Udantris, is about 8,000 lines of code. Wow. And then I have I other Discord systems in the world code. that have a lot of code, but not as much. The Tetris, the Udantris one definitely is the most. Um, um, usually the different code and different systems are around like 2,000 lines hmm. of code. Interesting. Yeah, the reason I ask that is because Prismic's done some really crazy things. I've been talking to him uh, for a couple of weeks, and the crazy things he's told me that he did to make his worlds work, just <laughs> out <laughs> insane. If you want to talk about that a little, go for it. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, I did to, to kind of first touch on that that uh, past thing about how long I've been here. It's it's a bit complicated because I had started playing VR Chat on desktop when my friends started getting uh, the index and stuff to play Alex and I had been waiting because COVID was hitting and wasn't sure my job situation so I kind of put it off until later in the year I eventually got VR headset and played a little bit more but it wasn't really until like wasn't really until the start of last year that we did anything more than just like check out a few interesting worlds on our own and then kind of hop off you know maybe once a month um and actually uh we had loved uh these funny hilarious and kind of cool madoka avatars like the one i'm wearing that uh digi the robot and uh her partner had made and i sent them a message uh and just a, a donation on patreon i was like hey we really love your stuff we've like they've made us laugh over the years like and then they ended up adding me and got to know and that's how i got pulled into vr chat like by, <laughs> by pull, pulled in like by, by the the neck basically um and from there i've been kind of more a lot more regular anyways so um it really wouldn't have been possible to do a lot of what I do in my worlds until this year when we got the remote string loading. Uh, it was actually my avatar search world came out the week after we got that feature. And I had to pivot it because originally I wanted to have all the searching happen on a server somewhere and it just sends you the results back. But no, it you can only send URLs out that are pre-generated. And that is like the bane of everything's existence yeah. for dynamic stuff but but i'm web dev and i i've got a you know degree in uh csit kind of stuff and uh a lot of familiarity with data packing and how to pull off some really crazy stuff so uh it started with the avatar search and we had had uh dolish which digi had shown me and challenged me like hey do you think you could do something like that I'm like if i had the uh the avatars id sure so uh, she connected me to people who had like huge dumps of them from uh, back when, uh, what is it, EMVRC, I think. Uh, the program before like the whole uh, wave of things for uh, easy anti-cheat kind of stopped that. Uh, but using the, the database for that, I was able to take that and do a remote request to get a big database and then make a search built into the world that has something like, it's got like 20 something parallel loops for efficiency and it's able to do the search in between frames. So. You can just, when you load the world, if you're on Quest, it downloads the Quest version. If you're on PC, it downloads the full one. And then from there, it can just very efficiently search through the list of avatars. And 
Hmm. That that part was kind of a straightforward use because I'm loading a single file. Um, a lot of people so don't know this got, about. So that's mm-hmm. how you got a hold of fifty of my avatars. <laughs> I, I, I have. Yeah. I have a lot of people I sending them in. So... Up, I have a thousand uploaded. I once typed in the numbers one seven three because they're all this. And next thing I know, mm-hmm. I just see them lining the walls, and I'm just like, <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah. Um, there, there's bigger databases than mine out there. there. There's one you can find that has over four million. I've only got like one point two five million or something. But yeah, a, a lot of people uh, don't know this. But if you if you're in a world with someone who has an avatar and it's public, the avatar ID shows up in the logs, and there's lots of people there who just collect those IDs and make a big collection. And so people would send me those, and they still send me big lists of either their own or you know, I get maybe a thousand a week or so. And then those get added. If they're private, it can't show up. Or if people request or do stuff, they can make it so it'll never show up in there. Um, Makes sense. But yeah, that, that was a more straightforward use of stuff. But from there, I kind of I was really wanting to experiment with more creative things. And especially in that realm of like, you're not really able to do much with these, but how far can I push this? And I had the idea of kind of world persistence. And a lot of people don't know this, but whenever you go into the world and you... You know, you toggle the chairs or you change the colors of the walls and stuff. I don't know if you've noticed, but if you rejoin, it actually remembers that uh, when you come back in. And that's I've actually seen using that in your world, world, actually. Someone changed, mm-hmm. someone pointed out by changing the color of the walls and the floor in your world, then leaving and come back, it stays like that rather than being yep. the original color. I never thought much of it other than the fact that it was neat, but just strange to see. Yeah, because because that's not a thing that we're used to in VR chat is like persistence. Like there's a Sue Room has their own version of it. I believe they use a shader for that to kind of remember where you were last in the world. But uh, mine actually uses a bunch of pre-generated uh, URLs. But I was able to get it down to a very small list, and it basically stores at the bit level. Like, do they have these toggles on? Do they have these sliders? Like, approximately what value is it? And it's able to save that to a server anonymously. I don't track the IPs or anything. And then it loads it back in when you join. Uh, and it, it's just magic. And I don't make a big deal out of it because, again, it was kind of just, huh, I want to try and see if this is cool. Um, but that actually paved the way very heavily. I, I'll try and wrap up because I know I'm being long-winded here. But that paved the way to oh, a VR fine. canvas. <laughs> a VR canvas like takes that to the extreme. And rather than just having little individual settings saved, there's now a shared persistent 256 by 256 pixel canvas that you're able to place colors on and everybody in any instance sees that shared and Mm. you see it update like in real time basically and that uses i think 4099 urls to pull off uh i think it's it's something like 16 million possible um values that can be sent to the server but it only does it in 4099 urls using some really uh really complex algorithms and uh, and timing and stuff with a server that can kind of map when requests come in and kind of interpret stuff. So that was a I real like challenge. The world caused, you caused VRChat to patch several things, like, a few times. Yeah. Because of the stuff you <laughs> yeah. did. They were like, oh, we gotta patch this, oh, we gotta tweak that. It was so funny. I, I used to have a thing that I, mean, I like. The one who can actually push the limits to when it needs things. to be pushed. <laughs> yeah, it's it's better for a good dev, a good uh, good person to break the things and then realize crap be abused. Let's fix that. Yeah, you you used to be able to save cookies on requests for uh for VR chat if it was a web or image request, and, and I was utilizing that just for um if I'd make a first request, I'd say okay, this is a hash for the user. So if two people are on the same IP, they can still have their settings saved. And then a few weeks later, VR chat broke that and i asked uh, tupper in the ask thing i'm like hey was it, it's fine if not but was this intentional he's like yes it's intentional that we got we got rid of the cookie <laughs> stuff I'm like okay fair enough i i understand but yeah all, all that to say like uh i really love pushing the limits especially of like connectivity to other services of um because placeholder actually did the same thing at the same time uh crazy and their group had the same idea for like a uh, r slash place world and they were doing it kind of in a very mm-hmm. similar way as i was and it was really cool to be like oh there's other people pushing the boundaries of like what can happen in vr chat when you unlock the ability to like have things save and have things like be bigger than just the instance itself and that that to me is just really fascinating you'd be a good yeah, game I've, developer. I've been <laughs> i've been on the same sort <laughs> of path myself for a while wanting to 
expand things and make it like cross instance changeable things like that like it it just sounds a lot cooler than oh i'm in this world with 10 people and everything that interacts while i'm in here is just these 10 people exactly mm. which is still cool but like it's, the ability to keep pushing and going beyond that is just there's so many possibilities that we oh, don't yeah. have access to yet yeah, mm. I've, I've talked to you about some of the things i've been trying to do and uh <laughs> failing at but <laughs> you've uh, definitely All got me beat on the crazy knowledge you, you <laughs> definitely got me beat um so you know since we uh, talked about the avatar world that you made i know some of my avatars from way back in the early days of vr chat back in avatars what <laughs> what was it 1.0 <laughs> <laughs> all all of the avatars that I have uploaded that are public that have not seen the light of day since 2018 are in your world. <laughs> Every single one of them. <laughs> oh, I think you'll become turtle furry now. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. oh. oh, no, I it's, played it's, a little, fine, it's hilarious. I played a little game with myself when I went to your world at one point. I have a thousand avatars uploaded, right? I didn't realize how many mm -hmm. of mine were public there. I kept hitting the random avatar button until I got one of my own. <laughs> and it didn't take as long as you think. Hang on. I was in there with a bunch of random people and three people got stuck in one of your avatars in one go. I just remembered this. <laughs> yeah. That's incredible. None of, my ones, none of my old 173s are rigged. So they are literally just statues yeah. that move. So when you get put into one, it's the most jarring thing because you get no head movement. You're just like moving up and down a pillar. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if you've got a thousand, if you've got a thousand avatars in there, that's that's something like a one in a thousand chance if you you know do the math on it of getting one of your avatars. Then, because if at a million to fifty thousand, you know, divide that by a thousand, you're, you're getting into the ballpark of like enough people you're gonna be getting a lot of your stuff that's really awesome though <laughs> yeah so uh so peach um i know you've been doing avatars for a while right i know you, you make like actual assets for avatars too right <laughs> uh yeah mostly actually it's making avatars so talk, talk about what you do a little mm. um well yeah i just mostly make 3d models uh assets Right and blender and texture them and then just throw them on Gumroad because I'm I do have quite a couple of avatars but they are such a pain to make. <laughs> I, I, I don't like that Unity, they man. I'm sorry, I just don't. <laughs> but <laughs> Unity for avatars is definitely. Do make an avatar? Yeah, no, it's, it's, they look Unity is okay. Yeah. You need a game engine, yeah, not a 3D modeling program, but you're able to use it to like, create <laughs> assets. If you're wearing an avatar right now that you made, million times better than anything I can do. Look at me. I look like I came straight out of 2017. Yeah. Skittle man. <laughs> well, you do. I don't but... know. You still look pretty <laughs> modern to me. Listen, it could it could be worse. It could be worse. You don't want to see the first model I ever made. Trust like that no, thing. Oh, his model first model I ever made didn't of... even have a texture on it because I didn't know how the fuck to do that. <laughs> the textures wouldn't oh import God. into Unity. I was just I was just a blank can, just just white. Failed, oh my God. It was hilarious. Uh, <laughs> so so you mostly make yeah. the assets uh, more so than the avatars. Yeah. 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 Like I, th I think I saw you oh. had some uh, hair assets you just put out oh, yeah God. i was actually thinking about putting that hair acid on this avatar just so i could show it off but i forgot whoops um, <laughs> but yeah is uh, actually my first hair acid i've ever made and i'm really proud because i put a lot of work into oh, no. actually learning how to oh, no, do I that i don't know it was a lot different from what i usually do horrible. um oh. but <laughs> it's definitely <laughs> worth it <laughs> Yeah, I'd, so I'd, I'd probably say, and I, I want to know if um, Prismic and Evolved in, I want to know if you guys agree with this, that um, avatar creation is a lot more difficult than world creation. World creation takes um, more technical knowledge. Avatar creation takes more of a design aspect. 
Mm-hmm. Then that's two different types of thing. I, I mean, you can't really compare difficulties then. Cause that's oh, I mean, di- more difficult for me. <laughs> <laughs> more yeah, I mean, it's me. hard to I mean, honestly, it's hard to quantify in that way. It feels like at least for world creation, where you have udon and stuff. Yeah, you can brute force your way things through that. But the artistic, I, I yeah. feel like the artistic <laughs> side, like that's something you really have to build up, like the talent and the skill. Like I have zero talent at like artistic <laughs> things. I mean, look at any of my worlds, and you can tell that I am. I, I'm a minimalist in that way because I know where I'm not good, but like I'm always amazed by what people can create with avatars of the talent to like Box. model and shape that stuff. Like that, that's yeah. stuff, that's incredible. So to me as well, like if, that stuff's incredible. But I'm also if, biased because I've been programming since you know 2001. Mm. So damn, you've been programming since so, I was in diapers. So this question <laughs> is that's, actually that is literally the year I was uh, born. Holy fuck! I'm scared of you. How old are you, Chris? Man, <laughs> I'm, I'm 32. 2001. I would this be seven. This question is actually pretty difficult to one. answer because for a number of reasons was, in its own four. right. I mean, I I I worked on Avatar by the on a and. Disc. Oh my god. And, well, I still have it. Oh my, I need to see this. Send it to me sometime. Hey, I gotta see this. Okay, guys. guys it's unreadable guys, guys. now. Let's I hear, literally can't pick it out. Go ahead. Yeah, 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 yeah. Remember Let's go. Netscape. Here we go. Here we go. Are we using Netscape as All a right. browser? So, the question you asked, is avatar creation or world creation more difficult? The problem with that question is that everyone has a preconceived notion when you say that, when you say avatar creation, people in their head right away imagine this amazingly cute avatar or whatever it may be, right? But when you say world creation, people in their head imagine, okay, a standard world where there's like a mirror, some toggles. Therein lies the problem. Because the difficulty exactly. of making a world or the difficulty of making an avatar is highly dependent on whether or not this is going to be an avatar that everyone wants to wear and that people would be willing to purchase on like booth, right? Because okay, think about it. When it comes Whereas to a, a world, world can hold depend on. on aesthetic. When it comes to a world, <laughs> what happens if I what happens if I make a world and I want that world to have NPCs walking about, right? And I'm a highly professional developer. I want to make the NPCs look like real life people, right? Well, what's the difficulty for a world creator when now he not only has to make the world, but he has to model the avatars that walk around in that world. So a world builder could <clears throat> technically have the same responsibilities as an avatar creator and then some, right? Or yeah. you could say that a lot of people make meme avatars that are very simple little things that don't take that much time, right? So it depends on what it is in your mind that you want to create. It's easy to make avatars. It's easy to make worlds. It's difficult to make a world or an avatar that's highly successful and highly coveted. That's the difference. Agreed. So what I was more, what I was more saying is like, um, world, you can just drag and drop assets and you don't have to do any rigging. You don't have to do any animations, no weight painting, none of that. Well, just drag not entirely drop true. assets, set a couple objects in the world, and for the most part, you have a world. that's just a cube. You can do the same thing and have an avatar. <laughs> it just won't be rigged, it won't be animated, <laughs> okay. it won't be textured. And then, you can make and then, so it's not a, And world animations, yeah. you also need to use like it, the uh, sequencer in order to like get an object to move around the world. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, just to have a basic avatar that can want. move and move and walk and move its mouth, that that sort of thing. The difficulty I, is I, purely yeah. based on how how detailed you want your creation to be and how successful you want it to be. Yeah, precisely. I mean, I feel like, and, and I personally like find avatars damn near impossible. As well, too. Well, well okay. <laughs> When you look up like tutorials or whatever, if you are like a completely new person that wants to create a world um, and you look up tutorials, as I did for avatar creation, for example, that's how I learned. I taught it all to myself, right? Obviously. Um, But when you look up tutorials for making a VR chat world, there are way less, there's just way less information on how to do very specific things. Whereas for um, avatar creation, you have 
so so many videos out there and um like pages dedicated to it so much information and so many creators also that are like like have servers dedicated to helping new people that weren't want to learn how to make avatars but i think in the end it really is about like what your skill set actually is like if you're a more creative person yeah. you're gonna find uh making worlds more difficult and if you're more like i don't know mathematical person i, I don't know i don't understand anything about worlds M then, more techie uh, creation might be easier speaking of yeah, uh, yeah. I I struggled so being much. more speaking tech of skill sets it, that also yeah. expands to like multiple forms as well in the form for avatar creation itself i'm a prime example that i don't do well with like three three 3d art but i can retexture really damn well so i can do a lot of like texture work really damn well so some people's skill sets don't have to line up with the 3D asset itself. They could just line up in the 2D space that can be applied to it. Yeah, like this oh, yeah, world here so that obviously. we're in, um, it's all, everything is just a prefab asset that I got from somewhere. All of it's completely free. I didn't pay for anything in this world. Uh, and then the programming that I did myself because technical crap is my kind of, my thing to do. <laughs> so like, yeah, world to to me, world creation's a lot easier because it's just drag and drop and be done with it, and then program some things. Avatar creation, I have to actually have an artistic brain, which I don't have, and try to figure out how to make things look good, which I'm horrible at in, in the first place. Spe <laughs> speaking from my time oh, doing game design back when I was doing level design in college, and when I still do it every so often, level design. Can easy, logic can be applied to this in that you need a lot of aesthetic. You don't want to be creating an abandoned school and have a magical rainbow in the gymnasium because that just looks out of place. You have to have an eye for detail to keep, consistent, to keep a consistent look. Unless you're doing that on purpose, you don't want that. You want something that will draw the people's attention. At the end of the rainbow. Hey, do you mind? This is this is the point in the in the podcast that my puppy is um attacking me and going crazy. This happens every time, every single time. Well, Eddie, that's you your mind? man's job. Cute little boy. Yeah, well, he's not here. He disappeared. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with him today. Uh, the but, uh, is anyway, did he? He's become the Oops. ghost of the podcast. <laughs> I was about to say, yes. has did a you you, uh, you make for, avatars, uh, right? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Do you have any anything uh, Avatar related, like any weird, crazy thing that you've done that um, you would you'd want to talk about? Maybe. Huh? Um, <laughs> I'm honestly, kind of unprepared. Like, I don't really know what I'd show off. I mean, there has been definitely some weird creations that I've made over the years. Like, um, one Avatar I made was I saw people uh, sort of having these like little follower pets follow them around. <sighs> And I made a cursed oh, avatar where I was like, what if you had another person following you? <laughs> so I, I made that. Oh. I don't know if I want to show it, but I made <laughs> that. <laughs> and oh. my curse, it freaked out it. a lot of people. <laughs> this it. sounds great. Okay, it's, okay. It's, 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 oh, no. it's hysterical. <laughs> Like, I need to see I genu this. genuinely, like, my friends and I would always, like, I would always go and check before I even met Digi, like, what new avatars they came up with, because they were always just the wildest, like, things we had seen that were so funny, <laughs> oh, but so, man. like, I, so weird, too. I remember someone, I don't remember who it was, but they made an avatar with, like, four or eight arms that they could individually like FPCs, like, switch to and pose. How do I, how do I turn off that FPC was, Prism? That was insane. Gross. That's uh, <laughs> Yeah, your, your FPT is definitely broken. It was very Here, do, strange. Do you want me to? Do you want me to? Do you want me to? How do I I'll spawn us. Oh, oh boy! Oh God, no, oh. Um, What's going on there? I think there's a. Oh, oh, oh. God, I think there's a switch well, in the menu everybody. to do that. Isn't there? Oh my! It, yeah, if, if you go to the, the if you go to the quick off. menu, if you go to the quick menu and go to mm -hmm. even you can turn off allow it full body tracking. That that one works with FPT though. I didn't see it. Dude, Eddie, no, is my, that my, my, not my knee, my my froze like this. Um, my heel. That's what it is that he's chewing on. Not my knee. Did you, did oh, you want me to spawn that avatar? Because I have it. A knee oh. and yeah, I just need to turn off. Yeah, yeah. Listen, yeah. How Listen they both look the same. One's 
Or where did no, once reverse? Excuse me? It's, it's under turtle. the quick menu. You go to the quick menu, go to settings, and then you go down to tracking and IK. There's a toggle it's for a body tracking. How is the quick menu? When, when you open, without going to the settings menu, you know you so click the, the settings square, in the bottom right. The little right. square menu. Yes, that's called the quick menu in the bottom right. <laughs> is it? I've never yes. called it that in my life. What's going on that's now? It's always been called it. the quick menu. No, no one calls it that. It's always everyone. I'm old. Okay, I'm the so menu old. that pops up when you menu. first click your menu button. What do you like, call that? What does menu, everyone the, here the call that? The radio menu and the big menu. The menu. Yeah, yeah. She, she, she's taught me menu. too well now. It's the quick menu. It's, yeah. So what? you have the it radio the menu, menu, you have the, the quick menu, menu and the full it? menu. You go down to Ain't tracking and IK. It's like halfway down. And under the big there, it's like uh -huh. the third one down. Allow oh, full body tracking FBT. She's Just turn right. it off. I don't see that. It's not right. in there. I have I have user real height and avatar measurement. Okay, then, then you're not actually an FBT according to it. So I, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, just show well, your avatar then. I don't then, even know how to you reset my avatar it. then. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Because I, I still have this one favorited, but it's, it's, it's very... I, I was like flashing creepy. everybody. Yeah, she was. All right, hold. Here it comes. Here it comes. <laughs> Moving Free fan service. Out. That's Madoka. This is Homura. You've watched uh, Madoka Magica. Oh boy! Oh my God! Oh. I don't. Um. What? I don't fuck? see it. Why do I not see it? I'm confused. No, look, I'm, I don't know if I that saw the Madoka crawl in early and was just oh, like, no. oh, um, no. it's just very cursed. Get, you don't get see this at all. Is, is there an animation? For, oh God, no! It's coming now. It was way over. Oh, oh yeah, no, it, it has to run from us or just. So this is uh this is Madoka Pet. Oh my God! What the? That is amazing. That seems very fitting for Madoka Magica. That is amazing. That is amazing. Inspiration to make like weird, weird stuff that people haven't really seen before. I don't know if I ever want to see that again. That is the best thing I've ever seen. Do, do, what you just do it to seen Turtle. Do it to Turtle. Who can't see it on the oh, God. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you see you bit. see a woman standing there Scott. with a leaf and another woman okay, on all fours. Just to to one of Turtle. <laughs> I'm like, what the yeah, you got like, Homer with leading Oh, my God. Oh, Madoka on her leash. Not too much. Like also, if you already have like the the avatar. I'll send made, you the like, mine. I'll send you mine. Set it up. Yeah, then it would just be like maybe thirty bucks, thirty five. Thirty US. bucks. That's a fucking. Because all, all I gotta do you is should, like, I should just do it on set my up the. Abby. I should do it. On my oh my god. Of you. I swear, if of you, you do this, if you Dude, if you go so through with this, turtle I... around on a leash. I'm tempted. Oh god! I'm tempted a while ago, so I gotta re figure out how I did it. This has been a while, but I could definitely do it again. <laughs> oh, Real quick, does anyone here have a have arachnophobia at all? Me, but it's not I, as bad as it used to be. Okay, okay. Uh, it, it's not an actual VR spider. It, it's a, it's a human just with a lot of though. legs. Is that okay? Oh, a that's human fine. with a lot of legs. Oh, okay. that's fine. Oh, a human with this a is, lot of legs. Oh god. Go this for is another it. one of Digi's. Oh my Did she, god. What, you mad. Oh, you you crazy that. motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> so, th th these oh, are the things that we would just. What the fuck is this? We would Why see these things and so we'd just be like. Oh my god. Like, what the hell is this? And it's just so many great things. I think the chat broke the hair physics. Oh yeah. <laughs> Why is yeah, it kind of hot if though? You, if you have fizz bones, convert what? to Bambi, what? Hair. <laughs> oh my god. Bambi, no, we're gonna have to put you down for that. Yeah, no. What no. did Bambi You're say? Done, You're not. You <laughs> said it's hot. It. It's hot. Oh, it's midi. Oh, my god. oh, oh it's god. midi. Yes. Oh good, yeah, you're fixing this. Oh my god. Why are you doing yeah. midi like that? I also <laughs> used to cross into, oh, one, into forbidden territory. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> nice. Oh fucking was that the necronut? 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 You got the... It's the necronut! Uh, the little creature. <laughs> it's a peanut midi. Necronut! 
Me I neck called it a necronut. <laughs> it's a necronut. Oh my god. <laughs> no, do you this want a necronut? This is so cursed. Uh, just just went from home. Home. Now this is what a necronut is. is. This whole oh, thing yes. just went from it's so actually, like very forward technical. It actually went from such a weird thing in the world. Oh my god. It's got hair. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. You want to talk to me? You want to talk to me? Oh man, I'm loving this. This is great. <laughs> Turtle Neko Nut is our own. This is exactly what I want. Welcome to third place Spookality a few years ago. Don't ask me how the fuck this unrigged mess got to uh, place. <laughs> because it's fucking because crazy. The, because the BRC so team that does the voting for it, it's just gonna be like this. So yeah. Yes. God, I feel the power levels rising. <laughs> yeah, I don't understand how. I remember I my bud Salbug sent me a picture of him as this, and I was oh, like, "How the hell did you that. get their hands on that?" He's just like, "Oh yeah, it's at the Spookality World." Wait, it, wait, it it's in Spookality. Unpacking. <laughs> Oh, okay. oh, oh my god. A Neko Nut. Yeah. Oh, yes, I remember this. There's there's a lot of very strange things happening here today. <laughs> <laughs> so oh so I actually uh, uh I actually do just avatar creation myself as well. Bears. I don't just do only uh worlds. But in for for me in particular, I like to, to uh do technical things with avatars. Um, so if you want, I can show you an example of uh, something I made on my avatar. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We're all, we're all, just... <laughs> we're all here to see weird, interesting things. That was Let me just switch to the avatar. Nope, Beatrice, not... Man, there, there's going to be some interesting <laughs> shorts from this video. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so <laughs> glad I decided to chug some NyQuil. Oh god. Uh, <laughs> I can experience this firsthand before passing out here in a couple hours. Oh, let's hope it doesn't <laughs> kick your ass before you the end of the show. <laughs> oh god. Who's got the magical girls oh, over there? there. Am I the one that's on Yeah, more magical girl <laughs> shit. Let's go. Uh, yep. uh, You're still I the one you were terrifying. before to me. Wait, I have to, I have to show it... everybody's avatar fully. Oops. I should look the same as I did before. It's just it has a yeah, different look... uh, thing on yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. What, what, what? Yeah. Okay, let's set this up. What'd you do? Oh. I kind of want a Madoka pet of myself of my own now. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you become a well, pet? Go, you go get talk one to Digi. She'll hook you up. Alright, oh here we God, go. Yes. Okay, I have everyone shown now. Oh. Oh. Mm. Whoa. Oh, well, that's cute. Pretty. That's cute. Whoa. Oh, wow. Oh, we got the whole what? magical girl shit. Oh, shit. Oh, you what? actually got the whole thing. <laughs> okay, and. Okay. I could never do anything like this. This takes me back to childhood and watching. Let me cut the pose. <laughs> Go talk to. Oh, oh, you right. Remember this. the golden rule when it comes to transformations: you don't kill them while they're transforming. That, that's incredible. <laughs> you can kill them after they're done or before hey, they start. Yeah. That's but never cool. during. My Sailor Moon that transformation. Is... That is awesome. Awesome. That's that's this episode. And that wow. was actually really cool. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, man. I guess I'll just sit back over here and sail the moon now. <laughs> I have to keep my distance because my okay. arms are long. Okay, yeah. so... Oh, so we, broken. we, we talked about point D already it's somehow. Some craziest avatar to... features you've seen. No, never mind. We, we somehow just yeah, naturally broken. ended up on... And I love that so much. <laughs> <laughs> I, I well, write down these key points night. to talk about, and it just happens before I even <laughs> get to it. <laughs> oh my god! By the power of the next snap, but I now, magical now the one point that we haven't naturally gotten to <laughs> is the weirdest world anyone here has seen or knows of. 
Let's let's talk about the weirdest world. The furry world. The furry world. The Japanese world. world. Most... What the fuck? What, the Japanese what about that, uh, some... There's a furry world. world. The Japanese. Oh, oh some you're taking me there later to show me how world. cursed it is. Yeah. Oh, no, no, sure. To... If I can find it again. No, it has to be that ASMR world where it's literally just a video of a chick beating your ass. What? Yes. Okay. Uh, what? <laughs> Not the weirdest I've seen. Yes! Oh, there's a there. <laughs> oh, there's, there's yeah. one where you spawn into when? a jar and there's brony art all over the wall. A couple months ago. I can't oh, I've seen that one. Why is that? that one. Why is that rainbow dash jar? <laughs> because it is. I, I still feel like that. Oh, God. Oh, uh, no. People have made some very cursed worlds in this game, for <laughs> sure. <laughs> Turtle, permission to pull out my most cursed avatar. Granted. So. The, wor the, the, the weirdest world that I've encountered randomly um, was a world you spawn in, and it's all in, like, grayscale color. And there's a hole in front of you, and when you fall into the hole, there's all these, like, stones that kind of, like, go into the wall as you're falling. And when you reach the bottom, there's these giant doors that open... And then there's a long hallway with like bookshelves that are all along the walls, ceilings, and floor. And the hallway's twisted like a corkscrew. And as you walk in there, more of the bookshelves are sliding out of the way until finally you reach the end point. And suddenly you're in a funeral and there's like a body just laying there. And you see animations of characters like crying in front of it. And there's no context of what this means, and that's all it is. With weird music, oh, what the f that is it's just a like, goddamn. Like someone went, that, off, someone got high and made I, that. Okay, if, that if they that didn't is. have the um the the fucking what's that? What was that like meme funeral song from a few years back? No, it didn't, have, it didn't have that. Kind it did not have song. that. It was like <laughs> it was serious music that was like. Well thought out and, made, <laughs> and just really added to the the atmosphere. As, I, I feel like someone was really high when they made. I that. think that's, that's creepier nice. than. Oh God! Look to your right. It, it's the moment for me. I'm at, 20, I'm at thirty percent. Oh, right it is a big one. Oh my God, Halen! What is I that? Know. Is that just meat? It's shaped It's pulsating. It's all pulsating. It, it's it's got it. on. I'm still downloading. Oh god, no. no. I'm still Wait, downloading. I'm what? almost done, though. It's very meaty sound. Ew! Ew! It's unpacking for me now. Yeah, I'm still downloading. It's just like, there we go. I said that to create okay. turbines. Okay. No, I mean, like, like any avatar. The first avatar of VR chat. Download automatically. I think you, I think uh, you succeeded. I, I yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I see. I it feel like you should just keep get making like every year trying to make it worse. Oh so god, it bleeds! Oh no! no. Oh, oh god, god. I see it got white coming out the other side. I'm at 50%. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I use this. I use this head as an experiment to place a separate head on this SCP-173's body and see if I could rig the head to work. And I did. And the head works. The eyes follow you. The mouth moves. Everything. I like that, that eye is jigglier than okay. some tits I've seen in VR chat. Your alley. I experimented. I experimented to see if I could do it. And I could do it. And so then I set out <laughs> to create the most disgusting, atrocious, Aww. vile avatar on VR chat. Hence, Flush173. I am. I hope that, that doesn't so show up in the search. I am the solicitor. <laughs> make, make a new entry in the SCP database for this. Create a story for it. Oh, yeah. How yeah, do that. are you handling the new... New tagging on oh, avatars. Um, they rolled it back for now. <laughs> so well, it's still there. On... They just rolled back the requirement for age mm -hmm. verification on it. Yeah. yeah. This is a so and and that's a complicated that's one that it's I'm still great. trying to figure out how to approach. I'm I'm tracking now in my own like, like cache of avatars what tags they have. I have the ability to have that load into the world, but the question is what to do with that. Uh, I'd really like it if yeah. VRChat had the ability for worlds to say what flags do they have on and then you can cater like i could make the search not show anything with that but if i don't know what they have what good are those flags if i don't like do i yeah. just block everything that's tagged which ones do i have to block do i allow them to uncheck them 
I, if they provide it with udon, that yeah. would be fantastic because then it would but be I very mean, easy. I could, I'd be happy to implement something for that. I don't, then then I they don't could even they could like implement anyway. other flags that are and, like, uh, or they, yeah, then pretty much, yeah, you can't load into it, but you can still see the yeah, icon right. for it. And, and, and um, and well, it's and, still there, yeah. taking up space, whatever, but. But, but that's why I haven't done anything with it yet. Technically, my world doesn't have any avatars in it. It just loads it from the database. And if they can't use it anyways, if it's properly flagged, then we're good. But if VRChat decides, hey, well, you're still responsible for any avatars that show up in your world, including those that aren't flagged. Well, that's honestly, even the flag system doesn't help me there. Then I'm kind yeah, of in a I bit of trouble with that. Then I would need to flag my world a, itself. Why? Avatars that show up in your world. Yeah. Um, so oh, it oh. would be nice for sure. Hey, oh. I, I like that idea. Has that been oh. uh, submitted as a feature request to VRChat yet? Do you know? Um, I haven't gotten around to it yet. Stable. <laughs> okay, because I really now. like that idea, especially for like Halloween worlds in case someone really yeah. doesn't like blood and guts. Uh, you know, if they have the excessive gore disabled, then they can still join the world and use the world so and they just won't experience that, that tiny bit of it. And you don't have to program in Good. a bunch of buttons at the beginning to, oh, enable this, enable that, and them uh, warning of what is coming, you know. Exactly. Like, I feel like that would be like the best for, for worlds, for avatars, for everybody to be able to have access to those flags yeah. and know. But, and because I've thought about yeah. this, and even, I kind of understand, even for I understand maybe, I understand maybe why they don't. Because it's also, you could possibly have people targeted for that. Someone could make a world and say, oh, I want to get rid of kids. If all these flags are on, like, go teleport them off a cliff or something. You know, I can understand. Yeah. Some, so that thing. <laughs> for, for that thing, though, the world would already be flagged with you. You can already just set the world and not deal with it because kids would be able to join the world. They don't have the flag enabled. Actually, that's Adding a really good down. point. I didn't think about that side of it. If they can already do that anyways to keep them out, then yeah, maybe not. Yeah. I'll have to make a future request for that sometime. Yeah, that, I I will upvote that. If you if you open if you open that future request, send it to me. I will upvote that immediately because I love sure I thing. love that idea. Hmm. And I mean, it world. would actually be cool for avatars to even have just a flag on the avatar so they the avatar mm -hmm. itself can tell, hey, do you have these flags enabled? So you can that would be you know, cool. let, let us select when you upload an avatar that, yes, this avatar has this, but it's also built in with a flag to disable if that user doesn't want that enabled. And, and right. it automatically sets it to disabled and no, will not allow it to be enabled sort of thing. VR chat. The, I, I think, yeah, I think the big not, problem with that one, though, is if they have it filtered yeah, that one for would that be more flag complex. anyways, you can't trust that the author is not going to, you know, actually yeah. take advantage of that on the avatar. And so if it's flagged, it's not going to show up anyway. So no point yeah. in having, oh, it's flagged, don't show it. But yeah, for, for worlds, at least could work. What were you saying, by the worlds, way? Worlds, it would definitely be nice. I was saying that there, I've been to a few, because I'm in public a lot. I'm, I was in a few worlds... I doubt they're up anymore, but there's something like that where on the quest side, uh, there's like either nothing there, so they just infinitely fall, or it crashes their quest. I doubt that those worlds still exist, but that's like the bare bones of what I've seen of that kind of territory. You know, Jesus. I mean, the, mm. there's avatars like that and that still yeah. exist for there, like no matter, quest crashes. I'm yeah. sure there's still worlds. No matter too. what you do, there's going to be malicious users that take whatever we're given and use it maliciously. There's no way around mm. that, really. It's it's inevitable yeah. in a social platform like this where anyone can upload content. It's going to happen. So VR chat is only you should only ever expect VR chat to take reasonable approaches to minimize that risk. And not expect them to completely eliminate that risk. That's just not reasonable. Yeah. And yeah. you know, them adding the avatar and world flags is them taking the appropriate steps that they can to minimize that risk. Yeah, and I think obviously that, that's there's going to be people addition, that don't like, flag the anything. Will... Yeah, <laughs> I think it's like it's been a great idea to be able to have that, and I, I think with that too, the ability for people to have not just public and private avatars, but being able to have like limited sharing either for the creator economy or for like giving out to friends would be yeah. huge for getting rid of a lot of the content that is out there that isn't meant to be seen by everybody but is because people want to share something with their friends or something so i feel like that would also mm. go a long way if they added that and i really I, don't I, I'll love they haven't added that yet yeah and I, I would love the day when they do that because then i can stop having to deal with all the requests i get every day for like avatar takedowns which i don't mind doing i'm happy to do but it's like <laughs> Man, this is a lot of yeah. work. It'd be nice if VRChat had a feature where people didn't have to show the stuff they don't want to show, you know?
or even had like a third option like this public and then private but a third option of like public but not allowed on on pedestals yeah or, or something like that even that would be like a really simple approach for it that could work yeah. So like we yeah, have I mean, currently with instances where it's like uh, maybe something that works for a code or something that you have like a quote unquote invite plus. I don't know exactly how you would make that work, obviously, because I don't know the like actually coding part of it. But, you know, that you can give people a certain code because, you know, right now there are systems that you can put on an avatar, right, where it has a code and then you have to unlock it to actually be able to use it, right? But mm -hmm. in general, this is more of a like, if you don't want your avatar to be taken by just anyone. And I've actually talked about that uh, a couple of times that you, for example, having like a friends only avatar that only people mm -hmm. that are friends with you can use, right? Or a friends plus one that their friends can also use it. Like, again, like we do currently have with instances as well. Um, yeah, that would, for me, for example, help quite a lot <laughs> so yeah. yeah it's like six degrees of vr chat who who you know and who <laughs> they know limiting uh what avatars <laughs> you might have access to yeah so, something in that realm of things i feel like there's a lot oh, of ways man. they could do it but i think having something for that would be really awesome for really kind of just revitalizing the people's okayness with avatars being public ring ring god he got the 90f <laughs> So, got the so uh, Prisma, phones, you, you bringing up you bringing up the uh, the six degrees of VR oh, chat is is hilarious to me because I think VR chat is so small. Even though there's millions of people that play VR chat or have played VR chat, I would I would be willing to bet if someone has played VR chat for more than ten hours in public worlds, that there is two steps that they can take you know them to one person and then to another person and they can get to any person in the game i actually don't know about that i i would disagree honestly it, because it i think be there's two to like sides three, to vr but... chat from experience there's really two sides to vr chat there's the social side and then there's the small individual groups like up until this year small, i didn't have more than maybe side. eight or nine people on my friends list and they're all people that i've known for like 10 years like you couldn't oh, have wow. gotten to me like did digi would have been like the first person that was beyond like someone i met in vr chat <clears throat> and then from there i've added and gotten to know more people because i got pulled into that different set i think there's a lot of people who just come in with just their friends or like a small group yeah. and they don't socialize in the big worlds because they're kind of intimidating when you go to a big world yeah, and it's just I'd... lots of screaming and stuff. There's I mean, a social side so and then there's the any... click side, so to speak. When I when I say yeah. that, it's it's like um, it more so. I'm looking at myself from from my perspective of things. I'm I have seven and a half thousand friends. I've been in VR chat since 2017. Oh wow. Um, and I'm still to this day having friends like Tease just randomly tell me, oh, hey, I knew this other guy, Vampy, since, like, long before VR chat even Don't existed. Worry <laughs> Don't worry yep. about it. And they just randomly, yeah, they met me, or they, they both met me completely separately, and met each other again in this world during one of the podcasts. And that is just insane. Don't VR chat's a small it. fucking <laughs> world. Or, or, or <laughs> fl flipping it to <laughs> into the real world, I've, I've got a close friend who uh, goes into VR chat with me sometimes, and one of Digi's friends, we found out when they were talking, they live like a street apart, like in the same city and stuff. Like they live like Ooh. super close, and it's just oh like, God, I met... huh, like two different people who've like been online at the same time <laughs> in virtual spaces, like worlds apart, but in the real world, like so close and wouldn't even know it. I met two that they could that see has each happened other's to me apartment. In the They're like, where way. do you live at? I live here. They're like, oh, no way. We're at. They're like, oh, you know, you know, um, that store right down, right over here. They're like, yeah, because I live right next to it. They're like, oh, fuck. And then they're like, oh, my Wait, God. I bet you know the apartment complex I live in. Yeah, that's pretty much what they did. They were yeah. literally apartments apart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. God. But yeah, I, I, that's, I think so that's the I, element so that's I joined, different. Uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, and I joined a Discord server. Like there was some friends I met, and I joined a Discord server. And then I'm just you know, whenever you join a Discord server, you always look at what well, channels that they have, and it was like, oh, they have like a IRL channel where they post like pictures from the real world. So I clicked on that, and I scrolled through a little bit, and then all of a sudden I'm noticing, I'm seeing all these pictures of of my neighborhood. I'm seeing 
pictures of my house and stuff, and I'm like, <laughs> what's, stalker, what's going on here? <laughs> like, there's some kind of like, I don't know what's going on here, but these are all the places where I hang out. You know, these that's the sidewalk I walked in, bef- walked on before I came in the house. Ha- so then and I met. I was like, "Hey, picture, like, and it's looking into your window going on at you. These, <laughs> what's going on with these pictures?" And it's like, "Oh, that was just pictures from when I was riding my bike earlier in the day." And I'm like, "Right in your, bu- <laughs> I live here. You live." And he's like, "Yeah." And then, we, yeah, he ended up living right next to me. That's why <laughs> it happens. That's insane. Yeah, it happens. See, that's, that's a, a lot to harder to happen. I'm where off I... scared for my life. I'm like, what? And then I found out <laughs> it's just somebody. And so then we end. Just and now, neighbor. now we ended up. We go bike riding together. <laughs> So yeah, I'm, I'm just imagining, like at that point, you realize the name of the server is like evolved, uh, evolved ant tracking server or something. <laughs> <laughs> the, next one, the next picture that gets uploaded is just taken from your bedroom window, looking at you <laughs> as you sleep. We found him. Oh that would be absolutely fucking terrifying. <laughs> just well, imagine the, getting invited to a Quest Discord 3. server where it's just tracking your entire life. <laughs> Someone could just be in the quest, hanging out with you in VR chat, and they'd be like, "Hey, I want you to look out your window." And it's like it's the person you're sitting with is out your window. <laughs> oh man, this is taking AR to a much bigger reality. <laughs> yeah, it's it's, gonna augment it's, your it's actual reality AR and VR together. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, my that, god. That, that, you know, I'm in the middle of Appalachia. I would be actually so, terrified if there was somewhere in, someone close to me in VR. So, and I just don't know it yet. So, since we're talking about worlds today, um, last podcast, something got brought up. The search for Mr. Whispers. Oh, yep. That I whole that up. ARG okay. in VR chat oh, yeah. back in uh, like 2018. Do you, do do you, you remember, that? remember that? Mm-hmm. I, I, I want to see that come again. I, your noobness is Not true. only do I remember Gentlemen. it, I was friends with Mr. Whiskers from back in the day when all that the legend started that led to that. Oh, neat. Wait, there was hold on. There was there was like an actual thing that caused that to become a thing. What? Yes. yes. I never heard yes. of this. It's an, it's an actual I, So basically, more time, I'm not, not going to go through the whole time. thing because it's it's, <laughs> oh, it's yeah, there was uh, actual link came a lot, wasn't but, there? There was a, there was someone in VR chat in 2015, who was kind of the first person to figure out how to make custom avatars, um, and he made a cat. Okay, it was just, it was a small cat avatar, and he liked to joke around, so he would always add features to the avatar that would do like stupid things, like. One of his popular ones was he would make it rain, like, like cat litter and stuff. <laughs> and <laughs> so there was a there was a, a podcast, like a, a talk show in VR back then called Gun- Gunter's Universe. Yep, Gunter's. And I was at his. I was there for a couple of those. Yeah. Yes. So there was Gunter's Universe, and Mister Whiskers was would always sit on the desk during oh, those yeah. shows. He would just sit there. Yes. I remember this Mr. now. Whiskers. Holy crap. Yes. That I was didn't know him. there was an actual and, person. Jesus. Right. And so there's, there's some lore there and, and there was a little bit of controversy because people would show off worlds and there was one time he, he did something that people got upset with is they dropped a portal because someone wants to show a world they made. And then when we all went in, Mr. Whiskers didn't like the world, thought it was it was junk. And so he put down a, a, an actual sign, a 3D model of a sign that just showed a picture of like cat poop and saying that this world is, you know, it's crap. A bit harsh. And it upset a lot of people because the because oh, it was supposed God. to be a joke, but the world the, the world author took it pretty bad and they got kind of upset. Um, and, and so it started this thing where there was like a love hate relationship with Mr. Whiskers because you loved him because he was always doing gags that would make people laugh and stuff. But then sometimes you hated it because he would take things too far sometimes. 
And so something went down. I don't know what happened because people that are in the know don't want to tell me for whatever reason. But something went down where he never showed up in the game ever again. Wow. And so he ended up being just this legend. And so that's why the the the, the hunt for Mr. Whiskers became a thing. It was the hunt for Mr. Whiskers because he disappeared from the game for years. Because so that Man. that's like the backstory to him. Yeah, I, I had heard insane. like little pieces of that. Now that I'm thinking back on it, and I I know I've seen him because I was at Gunther's um, show a good few times. Um, I think I met him in a random world in my first week or two in VR chat and got invited to the show. A um, bunch. Damn, man, I I completely forgot about that. He he doesn't do that show anymore, does he? No. Uh, no. No, that I know. Show hasn't I know been back. I know back then it was the the longest running talk show in VR chat or in, VR, in virtual reality, as he called it. Right, man. Right. right. I, I kind of miss things like that. Like that was something I would I would get on that the days that he was doing that. I'd get on just to go there. Yeah, wow. absolutely. It was always fun. He had some big names that would show up and stuff. It was good times back then with that. Yeah. I, I remember the world too, just, just a big circle and it's down to the table in the middle. Ah, oh, man, I miss the old days of VR chat. <laughs> there were some Different good times, times. but uh, there were also I, the bad. I'm of the mindset that I still, I still enjoy the future of VR chat. I know a, I love. Oh, yeah. I know a lot of people that were in VR chat for as long as I have been. They always talk, "Oh, I missed the old days. I missed this. I missed that." And I tell people, and I've been saying it literally since about 2016. I've been telling people every time I hear someone say that, I say, "Listen, what you're saying right, right now about how you missed 2015 in 2017, you're gonna say, oh, I missed 2016.' In 2018, you're gonna say, oh, I missed 2017.'" So you have to just stop saying that and just enjoy what you're living in right now because there's going to be a future you that say, man, I, I miss back then. So I always enjoy the now, assuming that what I'm experiencing right now, there's going to be me 10 years from now that's going to be like, if only I knew how good it was back then. So yeah, I just I mean, assume as the old guy yeah. in the room, I, I miss, uh, I I miss old internet. I, I miss forums from the <laughs> early 2000s and runescape and oh. all that stuff okay, that's, a oh, it, that's a different piece though oh, saying that you missed the old internet when it was a wild west that's a different beast entirely mm -hmm. wait a minute wait a minute exactly. as the old I as the old guy can off. i ask how old you oh uh, uh, yeah uh, 32 I, i'd answered that earlier as well i don't mind oh uh, look how young you are i'm 41 <laughs> Okay, well, you're the old guy here, so you remember. Yeah, he's he's my mom's age. My mom's only forty two. I I I take it back. I I have a very young personality. I I never grow up. I stay young. You're you're like yeah. You're only as you're like the playful guy. You've always been. To me, at least, absolutely. Since I've ever known you, you're the you're the fun, chill play that makes the crazy fun world. World. That's all I've ever known from you. I, I never allowed myself. Keep the, keep the I dream never allowed alive. myself to grow up. I I just, you know, man. I just enjoy challenge. you know it's playing fun. games. I feel like if you stuff. could have made your house yeah. Toys R Us, you would have. I would have made my. If only they made a house. I would Wait, make it out of Legos. Aren't you like thirty eight? I would build a house out of Legos. Have actual furniture in there. Yeah, sure I think circuitry is more, and everything is. Yeah, Legos. circuitry is older, but not. That would be great. I don't know. Shit. Man. I'm, I'm this only is 27. Just, yep. just we just, young, we're just going on a nostalgia trip now. Wow. I feel old. Old. Are are young. Young. I feel <laughs> old. I'm old in my heart and my soul. Man, anytime I'm someone asks how old I am, I tell them, well, if you understand you're math, I'm a quarter of a century. Why? <laughs> you're the same age I am. And you have you have no fucking clue how many people have looked at me and been like, what's a century? Yeah. No. Like, Man, people, people, I lose brain cells every day on this game. <laughs> you had one to begin with? Oh. I had two, and I lost, I lose the one every day. The same I, one I gets can, lost every I day. I can share one, but it's my last one. Is it in your big toe? No, it's in my ass. You gonna suck it out of her big toe? Oh, I'll definitely take I've that met, one. No, I'm no, no, that no. man in real life. I can attest he has no brain cells. Yeah. Oh man. 
let's we're gonna talk about our IRL meetups at some point on the on oh, this yes, podcast. Yes, That's gonna be a fun definitely. topic. <laughs> I forget who I all oh. met when I met you. God. Um, I know who you met. I can tell you who you met. I'll tell you later. <laughs> So, question. Turtle, man. What's the most cursed oh, avatars? No. For those of you who make avatars, what's the most cursed thing you've ever made? We already went over that. We already saw that. No. <laughs> I'm willing to bet there's even more cursed from Yeah, Digi, did, you, did you, you, you saw the fucking pet Madoka, right? Yeah, uh, I'm we, willing we, to bet there's something more that. cursed out of Digi. But I did, but I honestly <laughs> thought the spider one was more cursed. Um, I, no, it, they were both hot. equally cursed. Yeah, no, my avatar Vampy? cannot compete with any Vampy? of that. I've only made the door like, is over there. <laughs> what, what do you think? Is, is those <laughs> your Look, most cursed I've ones? I've always had, had a one, you think? for Monster Girls, from Slime Girls to Lamias um, to even the Spider Women. Look, oh yeah, you did used to be a no, slime girl no in all the time. Yourself. <laughs> you yes. no in a jar though. Oh god! Screen rot. Screen. 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 Whatever the fuck your name is, I can't say your. Ah, those fingers are oh. way too long. Oh, oh man. <laughs> god. Yeah, dang. Dang. Oh, yeah, you, you haven't dude, talked a whole lot. So, if you have any fun, fun things, avatars. I think that's what you. I talked to you the other week about, right? You you make avatars and stuff. I make maps and avatars. Okay, yeah. Go ahead and talk about anything you've done that's interesting or cool. Since we haven't heard from you yet. Well, the map side of things, I made Temporal Rift, and I also, at the time in 20, 2021, I made the FNAF 2 map, which became, like, the great, like, the black cat of the FNAF community. Uh, in terms of Avatar-related stuff, I made, like, a lot for the public to use, and people like using them because people don't usually make Avatars for PC and Quest, like good looking ones. I mean, you know. Ah, uh, yes. Hey, oh, oh, damn. What? What? Uh, what? Five Nights at Freddy's World. You said it was a Five Nights at Freddy's World that got you into, uh, got you wanting to make your world, right? That would have been the his. Which thing, one was that? Was daycare, security uh, breach. I think it's called the daycare. Yeah, it's called daycare. Okay. I think from Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. Okay. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I, the one that I, the I was sun just, and moon's in, isn't it? It was it was far enough apart yes. here in the conversation that I was just like, hang on, what's going on here? <laughs> Dude makes Five Nights at Freddy's World. Dude made his own world because of Five Nights at Freddy's World. What is this? <laughs> anyway, go go ahead and continue. <laughs> I just had to had to had to keep things straight there. <laughs> Well, there's not much oh, else man. in terms of like things that I'm proud of. I, I like I I have like basically a hundred maps. I've got like ninety something published and people can go to. Ow. But like no one's in there other than the Avatar worlds occasionally. So I just make avatars more. But because I I make things for the public to use, you know I have mm. different opinions on certain things. Mm-hmm. Ah, that's cool. If if I could if I could ask a question, I guess kind of tied into that actually. So I'm I'm relatively the newcomer here, obviously, and a lot of my perspective and honestly, a lot of the reason I made the Avatar Search World I did was I found a very it was very hard to find as a new user like avatars and stuff. Like as an honest opinion, I'm fine hearing it. Like how do you or like you all like how did you feel about the Avatar Search being a thing now that? wasn't before like Glad. has it been good for vr chat has it been bad it. how do you feel about it as creators I like for it. exposure for your stuff as a creator you do it right <laughs> there was a there as was a an avatar search world back then that was really bad <laughs> it uh, had no filter as a creator, was it, was it the, uh no. you would load into a world and it would be like a pedestal like a magic ball in it and it would yeah, that's oh, you click I it and it would into oh, no, 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 that was that was the avatar randomizer a long time ago. And yeah, when, I remember when that also, got deleted. Yeah. And then mm. that's how why I suggested to Prismic like we should add an avatar randomizer. Just yeah, I had never seen that. I'd never been day. there. I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah, okay, so I was so the like, one who suggested that idea. <laughs> so how it's implemented to you was like an important part of it then. 
Mm. Yeah, because before it like, simplified things. It, this was around the time when like Crasher avatars and NSFW was like had oh, no okay, yeah. lock and what stuff. So like people would go in there and grab a crasher or they would get crashed themselves which i found funny that they would crash themselves <laughs> yes. uh, but yeah that was like unfiltered like and that was like a you know i i see that as an issue but what you did and some others is good because it's not that you basically simplified yeah, things filtered. made it easier for people who actually want to find something to find what they want and also showcase people's avatars including large and small name avatar creators in their own ways. Something that had not been done before. Sure, people could go to random worlds and try on different avatars, but let's face it, how often would you do that? How often would you go to this random world just to try on this random avatar? With this, you can look up just any type of avatar you want that fits your taste and boom, you could have it. You did it right. Yeah. I mean, I have no complaints. I appreciate I don't really hearing make that. That's, <laughs> yeah, that, that had been the hope. Was kind of like you described it there. Like, I've heard from a lot of people. There were definitely a few people who were very upset about it. And I, I've never turned someone down when they ask their stuff to be taken out. And I've added new ways to do that. Try to be as accommodating as I can because I don't want to have people stuff in there if they don't want it there. But at the same time, I've heard from a lot of people who, to them, they didn't know how to make a world or their world would never be seen and they felt it gave them exposure. But I always felt there was a balance because it did feel like we did lose a bit of, because, you know, obviously I had to have been in VR chat before I made it. I remember going around worlds and there was at least a little bit of like, there was, it was fun going to Kmart and stuff like that too. You can fun. still do that. Yeah. So I, I've always still just fun. kind of had that, that weird mixed feeling about it. I think overall positive, but I can understand and sympathize with, especially people who had those big popular avatar worlds who feel like there's been a bit lost in the culture of hopping worlds and looking when everyone just says, go to, I mean, go to Prismix. You can still do that. Like, there's so many undiscovered avatars and there's new avatar yeah. worlds every day that Prismix hasn't seen yet, you know, that you could absolutely go exploring if that's still true. your thing, if you, if you like to do that. And that's why I try and tell people, too, is, like, I, I don't, like, Back into this I don't... Cur I you intentionally don't curate the avatars the there. I don't highlight things there because I don't want it to be a place where some people can outperform other people on stuff. I want it to be just a tool among many of the fine avatars. And if you want to find a good themed avatar, go look up a Genshin or Pokemon or a themed world, and, and you're going to find it you know, a lot better than you probably will in my text search for you know really good curated quality things so mm -hmm. that, that's what i try and tell people and that's what my hope is is that people if you look do keep if you're looking for that. something if you're looking for something specific based on the series go look for a world that will most likely have that based on the series if you're looking for something yeah. unique if you're looking for something unique or nostalgic because i've seen some pretty damn nostalgic avatars in that world then you check out then you check that world because I've seen some avatars There's... that I haven't seen since 2018 <clears throat> or 2019. Yeah, a lot of the old avatar worlds are just gone, or they've removed those avatars from the world and they put better avatars, so you don't see all the old avatars anymore. So yeah, your world yeah. really is, at this point, like the only place to find a lot of old things. So That's there is one other aspect cool. of, of discovering avatars that's still very viable today. And I think that go on, go on. Uh, Pete, is, I think Peep is a good example of this because, like, I was looking at at their uh, their bio and I scrolled down to see the worlds they created. And what I noticed is that one of their avatar worlds I have favorited. Right. So the mm -hmm. thing with me though is that I never, I never specifically go trying to find avatar worlds. But I have a ton of avatar worlds in my favorites, even though I never go to find them. And the reason is, a lot of times the way I discover avatars is just by playing the game and, and, and seeing people wearing an avatar. I'm like, oh, shit, yeah, I really like back. the look of this avatar. Okay, so I, I will click on them. And I will click on, you know, go to avatar author. And then once I go there, I scroll down to see if they built any worlds. And if they did, then I say, okay, so this person who made this really cute avatar, they have an avatar world. So I'll add that to my favorites. And then on another day, I'll visit all the avatar worlds I favorited and I'll check out all of their work, right? So 
I get a lot of exposure just by people wearing an avatar and advertising it by wearing it. That said, I do like to go to your world as well and just try and see what I get on a random. Or sometimes I will be like, man, I really want to do this funny gag. And for that, I need a I need a really good like Gargura avatar. So <laughs> sometimes I'll just go to your world and I'll type in, okay, Gargura. And then I'll find an avatar and cool. And then I'll do a skit with somebody. So to me, I think there's a place for both kinds. There's the, the worlds that people make that have like all these avatar pedestals of avatars they made. And then there's the world that you made where people can just discover things randomly or they can search for things. I think that there's equal room for both of those types of things. And that overall, I think it's positive in the general for like the whole community. Yeah, and tied into I think what you said there too. Like one thing that I I have no uh, regrets in, helpfully I hopefully squashing is uh, the gatekeeping a lot of people did for public advertising there too. Like one thing that I and then try and you know try and get people to do them favors to share it or things like that. I'm happy that that's oh, lessened that. with the ability. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that, that was something that Digi yeah, that... mentioned. She hated seeing people do that, but the ability that, yeah, that... gets rid of that helps. I saw people yeah. do that all the time. Yeah, I that, also... I, I would agree that since your world's been out, that I have seen that a lot less, because now people just look at the avatar the name and just go look at, for the avatar name or author and go to your world and search for it themselves. So now I most am people aren't doing the gatekeeping, so most people are just like, yeah, sure, here you go, I found it in Prismix anyway. You can go find it in five seconds, I'll just share it to you now. So there's one thing that I would love if your world is able to implement. Um, and I know this would be like a, a big, like a big ask, a big like thing. But like one of the, one of the things I've experienced with your world is that I will search up a type of avatar and I'll find a ton of options. And you have to try on every single avatar and go through pages of it. Because <laughs> you can never find the one that's, both PC and Quest compatible, that when I talk, the mouth actually moves, that works in full body tracking, that there's all the, it would be wonderful if there was like a website where there was like a bounty and like, here's, here is a hundred uh, avatars. If people could try them on and then just tag them and add that to your database so that when you, when people search for an avatar, you can have extra information that that you know shows this supports full body tracking. This supports Vizine, so you can talk. You know, it, it, I know you have like a million plus uh, IDs, but like if there was like a community engagement where people could just you know you have a list. So here's this week's collection of avatars. Try them on and tag them what they have and what they don't support. And over time, it just starts to get all that information and it's easily displayed in the world. That would be fantastic. Especially if you could filter, then in your world, you could say, okay, I'm only interested in quest compatible avatars that have full body tracking. Click, click, search. And then you only pull that selection, which would also decrease the issue where you're going through so many avatars that you get API blocked because you're doing too many requests. Well, you don't have to do so many requests if you could just filter it to exactly what you're looking for. So, so first on that, actually, that the, the first part you mentioned of platform, you do know you can actually filter by platform support, right? You don't have to look at just all. You can choose if you want to do uh, any or you can choose PC compatible, at least, or Quest, or it has to be PC and Quest. It's on the right side. You actually can do that. Yes. So that, that's, okay. that is one way that's, to help narrow it down. That's fantastic. Yeah. For For the rest of it, I actually do like the idea. It's not something I've thought about to that degree. I have thought of ways to potentially like make favorites, but Digi recommended I don't, and I know why, which is it would be going against the added favorites menu you have with um, VR Chat Plus, and I don't want to be stepping on that and possibly get in trouble for that. For the rest yeah, of it, I do like the idea. The, the, the big trouble for me is the funny thing about the world is... Okay. This goes into something I was going to try and think of a way to bring up. Um, the database for it is as compressed as I can make it. I had to do a lot of custom architecture for it. 
It's 62 megabytes for PC and about 12 for the Quest, because the Quest is just Quest compatible. Now, that doesn't seem like a whole lot until you realize how many people join that world in a day. Mm -hmm. uh, just last Sunday was the most that's ever joined. There was 169,000 people who joined in a 24-hour period. And 169,000, and then you take the, you know, the average of you know, half PC, half Quest, it's somewhere in about 40-something megabytes on average. It's like 6 terabytes in a, like a day of data. And Jesus, the wow. thing is, I, I don't actually have to host that. I am I am genuinely astonished. I have not gotten an email from Microsoft and GitHub because it's hosted. The database is hosted as a gist, <laughs> uh, gist file. I I'm I was shocked since last summer and it first hit over a hundred thousand. I've not gotten an email from them saying you're using a lot of bandwidth on these files. What's going on? Um, but where that's relevant is um, because I don't have to pay for a lot of bandwidth. It's, I don't have to pay for any bandwidth. It's just the data for the uh, saved settings. It helps a lot to. Um, cut down on not having any costs. I don't have to put ads in the world. I don't have to charge the world. Trying to implement a system where I now host the avatars and they're searchable online, that is somewhat of my concern of like, okay, now I do have to start worrying about, alongside VR Canvas, which actually does use quite a bit of bandwidth that I do have to host, potential bandwidth issues of now having to kind of make requests or if I add the data into the search database, the size gets even bigger. So that, that's, so that's my, probably my only concern. With that, you could make it an optional additional download, like join the world, click a button, and it'll download the second database that adds those extra mappings to the avatars for the um, extra features that he was talking about. So you, you could do that and it, and just have a hundred of them up on the website at a time so that, that like, like you're yeah, not going to get thousands of people, thousands of people going and looking at that and entering it. And then you can just update the database for that every week with the average of did everyone agree that this avatar is compatible with that did everyone agree this that, that compatible whatever and just add that as a that, secondary download that people can manually yeah. trigger which for quest most probably wouldn't touch it because every quest avatar is for the most part already going to have all the compatibility because it's all newer mm-hmm I, so that, I like the like, idea, I, I can, and I think what I might actually I do as well is help out with some designing on that. That's, that's like right what up I my may alley. actually <laughs> What I may actually do, though, is um, so actually all of us people who have avatar search worlds, uh, both uh, Dolai Mob for Dolish and uh, Dynamic Desire for, uh, they originally made avatar search, but now they focus more on VRCDB. We actually keep in touch and talk pretty regularly, and we're, we're all friendly with each other. There's at least for me, and I'm, from when I've talked to them, there's no sense of competition. We all love that we do a lot of the same stuff. We've shared databases and stuff. Um, That's good. They, for VRCDB and Avatar Search, they actually do have a website, and they take, like, Avatar submissions, um, and they do a lot of other stuff where you can search on the website. I might see if they're willing to do that, and maybe we could collaborate through that in some way, since they already have a web infrastructure and stuff. I might suggest the idea to them and see what they think about it. Yeah, that would be definitely interesting and make it uh, yeah, really it, fun. <laughs> yeah, I, I really these are actually some really awesome ideas because I've been trying to think of yeah ways to improve and get more accurate searches within the bounds of what I can do in the world. Um, it's hard yeah, to add more, I don't more options because everyone makes a new parallel loop, otherwise it gets really inefficient. But again, with with theirs, it might be possible. I I just uh, just thought of something here. So. Um, I don't know. I don't know a lot about the avatar data that you can get just from having the avatar um, ID. Mm -hmm. So, like, are you able to find what day an avatar was last uploaded or oh, updated? Yeah. Uh, all, uh, last updated when mm. it was uploaded. There's kind of a way to is get that, how many uploads have been on it. If it's Quest PC compatible, etc. Is that already um, implemented in your world to search for only avatars made after a certain day for a certain no. year? No, what it does that is... That would be an interesting I, one to... Uh... I sort by the whole list when you search. Whenever it was last updated, that'll be the first thing, and then it goes back in time. Um, the reason I don't have too many search features is, and you'd know this too, like, 
every if statement, yeah. every check it does is an operation. And I'm currently running like on PC, it's like a thousand checks every frame, and then it has to pause and let it render your actual screen. There's no multi-threading. It's all on a single thread. And that was the big issue with yeah. the old, if you remember the, the green grass, like with the little uh, fluffy green, like avatar search, if you went there, it would hang when you'd search. Nah. Okay, it was, it was the was avatar there. search. I've, I've only after... ever known yours. Okay, it I was remember, after Dolan before that. mine. Yeah, but you know how it would hang? Like it would mm -hmm. freeze things? Like that's because they were trying to do all of the searching without any breaks. Like I, I had to make 20 something parallel loops that have whatever optimized path and every additional search item would basically double that and double it again. I'd have to maintain all of those loops in, in series or parallel, sorry. Would, in order to keep it pipeline super everything. Keep, it would essentially, uh, what's the word? Not pipeline, but tunnel? Tunnel vision and everything, it, I guess? It would like, bottleneck put, it, yeah. Bottleneck it, that's it. Thank you. Yeah, it would yeah, bottleneck it and force like, the entire thing to just slow down because so much is running all at once. Yeah, it, it was it was nothing yeah. short of a miracle that I was able to get as much performance out of it where you can search a million and a quarter things in 10 seconds. Like, that that was very hard to pull off because it used to be about 10 seconds when I was about 200,000... And then it started getting up to like 30 seconds as I got up to like 500. And I had to optimize the hell out of that to pull that off. So adding more things is a little hard, like dates. And I'd also have to add that to the database. And that would be bigger too. So I'm trying to minimize my so data. So like another, another thing you could do is um, for like speeding up, like enable another button that gives a more, more detailed database or whatever um, and speed specifically say this is going to lag you out or or even like preload certain searches like if people are searching a lot for full body tracking visemes those types of things you could have a preloaded search just for those yeah i mean that, that and if all it's taking is 10 seconds to load stuff. the string then you could pre-generate that already and just make another string call and five seconds later they have it yeah, that honestly, that isn't a bad idea. And that's a lot of good ideas that I'm actually after this, probably going to write down some of um, other ideas I've had too <laughs> yeah. that people suggested is being able to random select based on your search. So if you'd search for something, have a random button that would random f from your list. So you don't have to go one by one or yeah. something like you can yeah, actually like, take oh, I want to do. Yeah, I want to see all the Knuckles avatars. You put in Knuckles and then just hit like random from search and then be able to like just see from that list. And that would be easy to do because it doesn't add extra search stuff. But yeah, I yeah, like these that, ideas. I'm, I'll take some notes and see what's possible <laughs> with it. Thank you, guys. Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely uh, you. I'm. I think I had talked to you. You have something that like sort of pre-generates the database file from uh, from some other form of data, right? Yeah, I I run a lot of stuff so locally. You, you could, I haven't uploaded you, yet, but you, you could pretty easily um, inside of that generation system, pretty easily just add in default searches for like quest compatible avatars things like that for pc whatever and just have extra links that they have to manually click and search that before it downloads that list mm -hmm. yeah it would be possible to do that <laughs> wow <laughs> see this is why i like to <laughs> like to bring people that know their shit on for the podcast because everyone learns something everyone comes up with some new idea from it Every time, every one of these podcasts that I've been doing for the last close to a month now, I think. I don't know. We're on episode five. I like um, with balls too. Only been two so this is the third week. This, <laughs> this, is, this is the third week of the podcast. And it's we come up with new great <laughs> ideas during every one. And it's just, were you sleeping? No, no, I was watching Pete play with the ball on their jacket. <laughs> <laughs> hey turtle. I'm just minding my business. Damn. Yeah, what's wrong with you, tease, huh? She's yeah, a tease. Like, um, what do just, you expect? I'll, I'll say this now. If any oh, of I you that are here right now me. have an idea that you'd like to talk about on the podcast and get more in detail on something. It doesn't have to be VR chat related, just, you know, usually try to keep it internet related in some way. Like, uh, episode one was about VTubers, so that was pretty fun. But, like, if you have any ideas for that, let me know, because I, 
I am loving putting these on. I want to bring you all back at some point for another another episode to uh, talk about more things. Oh, you'll never escape me. It's... You know this. <laughs> I probably have yeah, a few I ideas. You. I can think I'm, of. I'm, I'm than that. definitely interested. So, <laughs> uh, anyone else have uh, anything on the Avatar or World topic that they'd like to uh, hint at that we haven't talked about yet? I do. Go for it. Uh, what was, I guess, the catalyst of people becoming Avatar and or world creators? Like, what was the catalyst? Like, hmm. the thing that caused them we, to want to make Avatars did, or maps? We already talked about yeah. that for Prismic and Evolved Ant, for the most part. Um, I, think I believe. I, I think he's talking or about... Just in general. You become a world creator in general. Or an what avatar, you become an avatar and world creator. Yeah, yeah go what for it. Everyone, everyone the tier that does that, um, okay. go ahead and answer. <laughs> Start from um, that side. Of you want to go side. first? Okay. We'll, yeah. we'll go that way this uh, way then, this time. I started <clears throat> making avatars. I uploaded my first one in 2018, and it all started because in high school, I kind of, you know, I really like to make MMD models. Like, I got into that. And I was like, oh, this is, this is pretty easy. And then when I found VRChat from, like, the Knuckles meme, I found out that, like, you could actually, like, easily convert MMD models and put them in VRChat. So that's how it started for me. That's what made me start making avatars. That's pretty much it. <laughs> that's, that's cool. Um, Prismic, did you have any uh, more input on why you oh, uh, um... decided to start making worlds? Yeah, or was that uh, still the same idea? I mean, it, 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 mostly <laughs> meeting Digi, but technically that wasn't my first world. Like we had talked about that, but oh. uh, I like to create and to make stuff, particularly programmically. And so when I learned about Udon, it's like, oh, it's oh, it'd be interesting to try and make. Oh, maybe I'll make like a Simon Says kind of thing where you have to like memorize uh, like the Simon, not Simon Says, the, the color thing. So my first world was actually like being able to. Uh, I originally wrote in the Udon graph, and it was so big it started taking, like, 20 oh seconds God. to compile. And so I just scrapped it all. I rewrote it all in Udon Sharp. And, then, and my, my first actual public world was uh, Simon Squares. And that got that got, did all right for a game. Like, you know, it wasn't huge, but it was also pretty plain and basic. I, it was fun learning Unity and stuff. Um, but yeah, it, it was really just ultimately wanting to be able to... I, I don't feel artistically creative. I can't make something beautiful in a... Uh, <laughs> A visual sense so i like to make things that are like beautiful in a functional sense things that are like stand out and are different and yeah yeah spot yeah, you, you guys get it. Like, spot on with me i i i 100 get it <laughs> so that, that, that was my inspiration ultimately was like how can i make something that's like innovative and awesome that lets me meet that kind of creative desire i have to make and that's what got me into that alongside digi being the one to kind of encourage me into that because they made avatars like well i can't make avatars but i can do this so that's cool uh tease you you don't uh do you make avatars i, I think you said you did at some point or did some like right? i opened blender <laughs> once and it exploded i do texture stuff <laughs> for ow i hit my okay. wall for avatars. that's a mood <laughs> texture stuff is, okay. is still a part um, of it though that yeah, it is. yeah textures are textures are very helpful um so peach what what got you to make assets and avatars um well, it was because I was in college for game art, um, and while well, I was already learning 3D, and I'd been playing VR chat for years at that point, so I was like, you know what? Might as well learn how to, you know, convert the models that I'm making in, um, well, 3DS Max, technically. I was using uh, 3DS Max for college. Hell yeah, I love Max. I... <laughs> But, um, yeah, I just, hmm. yeah, I refused, at, Maya, at a certain but... point, I just refused to to use that fucking program, because it sucks. So, oh my god. <laughs> Love Max when you're starting. My is still better. <laughs> no? Hmm. No, no, really? it's just generally bad. It's just generally <laughs> bad. And, and it crashed for me so many times on the school computers. Oh god, don't even horrible. get me sorry on that shit. <laughs> I'm crashing. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, so I just started oh. making my stuff in Blender and importing them into 3ds Max. And I was like, ah, no one will know. Get wrecked. 
<laughs> so, <laughs> Volta, what what made you decide to start making uh, worlds and avatars? Okay, so when I was a little kid, I was playing uh, Doom on my uncle's computer, and he was showing it off to me. And then he told me one time, he was like, you know, I heard that there were people who even make their own worlds in this game. And that fascinated me. I was like, wait, you can make your own, like, 3D worlds. That's amazing. But I didn't think too much mm -hmm. of it after that. I kind of forgot about it. And so one day, this was in, uh, this was 1995. Uh, I was in the mall with my brother and, and my dad. And my dad bought my brother these brand new sneakers that my brother picked out. And they were expensive. So I asked my dad, I'm like, dad, he got shoes. What do I get? And he's like, oh, fine, what do you want? And I was like, okay, we're going to GameStop, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so so we so we went to the game store and I'm looking around seeing what game I want and then all of a sudden like, what caught my eye was this huge thick blue colored book it was 900 pages and it was called Tricks of the Doom Gurus and I'm like what the heck is why is there a giant book in this game store so I started opening and flipping through it and I quickly realized oh my god this teaches you how to make your own worlds for Doom and Doom 2. And it had a CD-ROM in the back of the book that had all the, the software for building your own worlds. So I got mm. this giant heavy book and I'm like, this is what I want. I was only like 13 years old. This is what I want. And my dad's like, you took me to the game store and you're going to buy a book? I'm like, yeah, this is what I want to start <laughs> That's the best line of You took me to a game store to buy a book? <laughs> that is so crazy. Love you, Dad, that is so kid. 90s. <laughs> yeah, so, so I was like, ball. yeah, this is what I want. He's like, he's like, all right, if that's what you want. So he buys it, and, and I take it home, and... Uh... I started looking through the book and I put the, the CD-ROM in the computer and I downloaded the software. It was called uh, DoomCAD. Okay. And it's very primitive. It's very primitive. You know, in Doom, you couldn't make... You, everything was flat. You couldn't build something on top. You couldn't have like two floors, three floors. Everything had to be spread out. So I'm reading it. I'm learning. And I started learning how to build a, how to build a room. But I didn't know how to do anything more than just build walls. And I didn't push myself to try and get any farther than that. For me, it was like, eh, good enough. I'm technically building a world. Until one day, my brother, who was three years older than me, he wanted to try his hand at it. But he was older than me, and so he had more of a patience. And he was like, well, I want to learn how to make a door. So he read the book and got to the section where it teaches you how to make like an actual working door. And he got it to work. And he told me, he's like, you know, uh, come here, come here, check this out. And, and I was like, oh, you got a door? And, the, and he's like, yeah, all I did was read it here. And it, like, then it clicked in my head, like, what am I doing? I should be learning everything and making all kinds of crazy stuff. So I did that and I got immediately addicted because I immediately, the first thing I built was a recreation of my house. And already <laughs> I figured out how to get it where I could have multiple floors. Because I'm like, damn. You can't have multiple floors. And I thought, not to myself, I'm like, wait, what if I make it that when you go up the stairs, it just teleports you to another section of the map, and it's so mm -hmm. quick that you just think you're on the second floor now. You know? So that's Ooh. what I did, and it worked perfectly, where you can go up the stairs, and I was like, oh, I'm on the second floor now. Um, and so that kind of stuck with me. I would always build maps for Doom, Doom 2, until uh, the game Half-Life came out um and that one enabled you to build 3d in any direction right and and half-life i was like this game is so amazing i wonder if you can make your own world for half-life and you could they had ha valve hammer editor right now during that time um i ended up having something happen to me where i had a lot of time to learn um i had a uh, 
So I was born with rotoscoliosis, so my spine's shaped like an S. And so I had an operation when I was 17 to correct that. Um, and so after that operation, I wasn't able to go to, to high school for like a certain number of months to, during recovery. So I used all that free time that I had. I used all that free time to learn everything I could about how to make worlds for Half-Life. And it ended up that I got so good at it that I became kind of like the voice of like ex teaching other people. I ended up on various mod teams. I made maps for uh, Counter-Strike 1.6, Half-Life Jailbreak, uh, Earth Special 4, all these different mods for Half-Life 1. Um, and then I, I, I kept continuing until eventually I was making worlds for, for Left 4 Dead 1 and Left 4 Dead 2. Um, and then one, and during those days, I took it even further. I said, well, I want to learn how to make 3D models too. So at the time, Valve was recommending people learn Soft Image XSI. So I purchased a course that taught you how to do that, took the course, and then I immediately went to work working on this world called Silent Fear. That was the world I made. And it featured a custom boss battle at the end that I 3D modeled myself, wrote the code for, scripted it. Um, and it ended up being so popular that I was actually uh, invited and I actually went to Valve Software's headquarters and I met like the team, I hung out with Gabe Newell, um, and I eventually so became like a beta tester for for Steam, wow. um, for all kind of different things. And Man, you are old. Eventually got to the point- <laughs> <laughs> Wow! Wow! <laughs> oh man! Wow. Oh. That's what you take away from that. that. Like this whole story, and that's what that, you take away. Yeah, from this, that. Okay. this whole story, like this is like extremely. No, this, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to have yeah, you. No, this, your, this is seriously. Story, I'm so fast. Yeah, just, this is so yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. So so that, that, you, you are you so much more interesting well, than I thought you were. You're old. <laughs> he pointed out he was okay, older than me when I said I was the old one. Okay, go continue. I promise continue. I we're, uh, Nikai, we're getting close I to the end of the stream here, so I apologize. End of the podcast. Okay. Uh, I'm actually <laughs> I'm actually skipping out on a lot of things that are interesting, but I'm just trying to because I'm focusing on just the whole like why did I get into the world building. Oh man! But um, so so basically, uh, after that, I wanted to do more, and I found that building for half for building for Valve's SDKs was actually very limiting. It, it, it was no my limitation was no longer not knowing how to do something it was that the sdk just didn't allow me to do what i wanted to and so i started exploring in unreal engine i started learning that and then uh in 2014 i became a kickstarter backer for the oculus rift dk1 um so i got that and then i found i discovered vr chat and it was like wait you can make your own worlds and you can explore them in vr so then I, I, got, I stopped learning Unreal, and I jumped to Unity, uh, and then I just fell in love. Because it was so easy <laughs> to use, so easy to build a world, to, to, to add functionality. It was amazing. And so I stuck with that and have been building worlds and avatars for VHI ever since. So that is the, the, yeah. the progression there. Yeah. That's awesome. Wow. Did, did you, were you making worlds in VR chat back when custom scripts were completely and totally allowed? Or were, yes. oh yes. man. Yeah, I, I, when yes. I talked to Ron I, back in the you, day about you that, like he showed up some more. And you can just, yeah. <laughs> you could just write oh, your man. own code and, and, and you could just include with your upload both the world and, and avatars, you can include a DLL. That everyone would just execute automatically. Mm. There oh, was no wow. security. You could write whatever code you wanted. Oh, man. It was like really, the Wild West of VR. That would have been, really so, the wild that been so cool. You could make such cool things. That, so VR chat went from being wide open. You can do whatever your mind can imagine. To being, well, now you're limited. You can only do certain things. Then they took away the video players. Well, and then it got really locked down for a couple of years there. But now it's opening wide open again with the Udon. And especially the string loading. So be... Believe it or not, Mr. Whiskers is part of why you weren't able to, to upload DLLs with VRChat anymore. Because there <gasps> oh. was one day, 
because he sometimes he pushes things too far. He made an at he he updated his avatar where he could pull out a rocket launcher. Okay? And he would fire the rocket at you, and it would crash you. It was the first crasher in VR chat. Uh, <gasps> Mr. Whiskers uh, made that, and oh. he would shoot that at me, and I would be so pissed because I'm like, the way I was thinking is like he's already now he's messing around with things that literally crash you, and I'm thinking to myself like, wait, this is random code that he that he can just write. What if something really? And I was like, oh shoot! And then that's when I had a discussion because. Back then, you were hanging out in VR chat, and the CEO would be right next be, to you, right? Yeah. So I would have a conversation, like, "Look, we got a problem here, because now we have people making avatars that can literally crash you, and I can't, I can't in good conscience trust running your game anymore if anyone can just execute code that I just, you know, I download and execute automatically. Like, this needs to stop. Like, you can't have that. That's not good." I had that conversation with him, and then oh. after that, they they shut it down, and you couldn't do it anymore. Yeah, so, Ron took me to it, one of the super the old best. worlds back um, years ago. That he was like, "Yeah, you used to be able to get abducted by aliens here, but that's all gone because <laughs> the custom code is gone." And I was like, "Dude, that's that's wild!" Like, I think he made the world long, long ago. Um, anyway, let's let's continue and let uh, let those two talk about uh, well. Vampy doesn't really make so, avatars, so uh, Halen. <laughs> so I, one day, back when I was in college, um, I went to college for game design, and one day I decided, based on watching one of an addition's old videos about scaring people, I want to do the same thing. So I went with the one thing that I knew about that I could use to scare people, SCP-173. Here's the thing. I didn't know how to make animations. So I improvised by doing random shit like uh, this, <laughs> like having sign, having signs. I have a controller somewhere in this room, and it is dropped off. And then I came up with little gags like this. I'm right behind you. Turn around. And it just kept evolving. It literally kept oh. evolving i eventually started frankensteining different 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 assets together retexturing uh, so you, you to, just <laughs> so you just got bored and just just like said fuck yeah, it i am the, i am the one three putting, guy i started putting one i started putting <laughs> emotes of streams i respect on my face and that set a target on my back inadvertently for a lot None of streamers of to get my face <laughs> on to get their face on me and i was just like ah oh, i know you have one of me <laughs> i know you have yes, one of me <laughs> yes i do you oh, have a geez. handful that have me on and them. it just yeah expen it's gone to the point where i've been on this game since 2018 <laughs> and i am literally known as the scp 173 a VR chat, and if people who know me from the past see me outside of one of these things, any kind of statue, they usually scream at me, What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, well, anyway, that that it's it's Ciao. awesome hearing all this from everyone here, but um, oh, I God. think we've been going for uh, just under two hours, so I think we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up here. Uh, we're gonna do what I like to do at the end of every one of the podcasts now and uh, we're going to go from my right to my left if you have somewhere that you make content that you want to advertise go ahead and advertise that and we'll start with you Skin, Skrin, Skrin what, I can't even say your name Skrin, Skrinod Studio yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, <laughs> take take like 30 seconds to uh, offer your services whatever you do, where people can find you uh, literally just my name. You can find me on like YouTube, Twitch, and pretty much everything else. I just make avatars and maps and such. But yeah, on Twitch or YouTube or anywhere that has my username, which is good. Okay. Digi, go ahead. Um, I'm just, you know, uh, I have a Patreon. I'm making stuff in VR chat right now, kind of just like on the side because. Uh, focusing on my career like in real life outside so just small commissions for now uh, I have Twitter that you can follow me it's uh, my VR chat name as well search up Digi the Robot you'll probably find me yeah okay Prismic go ahead uh, 
nothing too much to be honest uh prismic 247 is the discord if you need a avatar at wanted added or uh, removed or anything from the search uh beyond that i'm just gonna further endorse like i love digi's avatar she made this one as well that was a commission and continually updates it and stuff without me having to ask you like hey i've got a cool new idea for you so i'm just gonna prop her up and say i really love her stuff <laughs> and that's so supporting her I, on that, I love but other the... than that yeah <laughs> <laughs> I love the crazy things, too. Uh, Cheese, go ahead. You can find me anywhere at Cheese.VRC. <laughs> yeah. Don't She's die. The smoker and you, the smoker Don't and die in my, on my couch. Uh, no I'm dying on my <laughs> couch. <laughs> the fuck this is? You okay. fucking win again. Die. But is she supposed to die off of your couch? Yeah. Yes. I'm, I mean, I'm, not no cleaning up, uh, I'm not cleaning up dead body. Anyway, space. Peach, go, go, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Advertise yourself. Um, well, I have, like, pretty much all of the social medias, except t- TikTok because it sucks. Um, and it's always, like, a variation of, like, Peach underscore Boba or Peach underscore Boba underscore VR. Um, and my Gumroad. Oh, fuck, what's my Gumroad again? Uh, just like look up Peachy Boba or Peach Boba. I don't remember, but yeah, that's where I sell my avatars and assets. And there's also a link to my server, uh, Discord server that is, and my link tree or card or something with all of my socials right there. So you don't even need to look anything up. So, yeah. Okay, if all that, go ahead. I mean, you could just type in Evolved in in any of the things and you'll find me on Twitter, on Patreon, on, you know, if you go to my Evolved in Arcade world and you can click on the menu, says contacts, and you'll get all the information there, so. Perfect. Halen, go ahead. (laughs) This is the second time I'm doing this, but I am Halen Riser on Twitter. On Twitch, I am Halen Riser 978. I am someone who is... Stream, who streams for fun and will be streaming tomorrow, Pow World, because who doesn't like Pokemon with guns? Oh, yeah. I've, I, I've heard about <laughs> that. I need to get into that. I, pre- I am known as the SCP-173 VR chat, and if you want to throw an SCP or so at me while I'm streaming, come on by, because I'm, I'm rigging up my uh, Twitch to basically have the ability to throw all 1,000 of my SCPs at me while I'm streaming. And then you wanna uh, throw one that's, that's cool. <laughs> I gotta come throw some at you sometime. And Vampy, go ahead. Uh you can find me on Twitch at Sir underscore Bloodworth. I do dreams, stream this, and at the other at this current time I don't stream anything else. I am really lazy and I need to get back on the grind. <laughs> uh, okay, well <laughs> that's great. Um, I want to, once again, thank you all for coming here and talking about your experiences with world and avatar creation. Um, next Tuesday, uh, crap, what are we doing next Tuesday? I don't even remember. Military. Let me... Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah we're yeah, bringing military, military members of VR chat on next Tuesday to talk about their experiences and how VR chat has made being in the military a little easier for them to like continue to have a social life sort of thing so i'm bringing on a few people uh for that on tuesday you know podcast is streamed on my twitch 6 p.m every tuesday and thursday and that's 6 p.m central time um it's then uploaded on youtube the next day after and you know <laughs> come see it live watch it later all good to me um thank you all for coming and this has been great. I'm having a having a blast doing these podcasts. So, That's good. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and thank you. Find someone to uh, ask people out to. Pleasure to meet you. And uh, you are all welcome to stay hanging out Likewise. for a couple minutes because I do want to one more note to follow up to after I uh, end the stream here. So, just give me two minutes. And I will see everyone uh, watching podcast on the next one. Woo!